Good morning, everyone, on this beautiful Monday. Travis Montgomery here, Director of Marketing for the Multifamily Investment Advisors team here at uh, Keller Williams Commercial, powered and backed by Keller Williams Commercial and KW1 Chicago, where we've uh, achieved over $407 billion in sales volume for 2020. Want to start off this uh, webinar by introducing the executive director of the team, Tony Hardy, where he's going to be giving, going over some information regarding the real estate market. Hey, thanks. Thanks for sharing that, Travis. Um, I'm going to do a screen share and uh, see if I can't uh, figure out how to share my screen. Share screen. Of course, what I'm looking for, I don't see it. And we're gonna get going. But uh, thanks to all of you for um, joining us today. And um, thanks, uh, Travis, for um, for the introduction. Okay, share screen. There it is. Share. So this is a presentation that we did um, recently uh, in conjunction with um, uh, Brandon Speck, the uh, market economist over at uh, CoStar. Is anybody, are you guys able to see it? No. Yeah, it's a black screen right now, Tony. Yeah. And then let me try it again. Coach, do you kind of sign far, far away from your mic as well? I do. Cody, not you, Tony. Cody. <laughs> All right. This should be a lot better then. That is better. All right. Let me try this one more time. Here's one thing. We're going to start with having a video on. Now, screen share. Share. There we go. All right. So the first part is the Chicago apartment forecast. And we're looking at the average price per unit. Um, we took a little bit of a dip. Um, if, if you look um, at the end of 2020, 2019 going into 2020, prices dipped a little bit. Uh, the economists at CoStar Real Capital Analytics uh, we're predicting that trend to continue a little bit, but it's still not a, a major hiccup. And it's looking at Chicago as a whole. And part of that is the, the, the large buildings downtown, which are significantly priced at price per foot, uh, were underperforming. Uh, there was also a very large sale that happened at the end of the year. And... Um, it kind of affected the, you know, kind of threw things off. And sometimes you need to throw out the large sales, throw out the small sales to kind of get a median um, when, you, when you're doing these. But uh, the, the, the trend continues. Apartment pricing, uh, which is the, the purple line going up, is showing that the, the pricing is at about uh, 193,000 per unit on average. Um, but the year over year change, is down about 3.4%. So there's a little bit of a gap, if you will, between pricing expectations for owners and sellers and what the buyers are, are willing to pay. That's where brokerage comes in at, but we also need to look at that. Transaction volume ended the year 2020. If you look from the trend from the, from the downturn in 2008, uh, when you go nine all the way through basically 18, uh, 17, it was, it was pretty much going up at an upward trajectory. 18 kind of flattened out. 19 took a step down and 2020 was off significantly. This is the first time in a uh, very long time, actually since 09, that our market didn't uh, crack $2 billion in sales. Uh, they're still trying to backtrack and look at recordings. We're at like $1.9 billion um, in the market as a whole, annual transaction volume. They're still trying to see if there were any recordings that they missed uh, because um, they, they, uh, less than $2 billion is, is significant for 
the Chicago MSC. Annual transaction volume, uh, 120 billion. Um, some of the other things that we look at is construction. Downtown market deliveries are still on pace. Uh, they have about 3,500 more deliveries that they're expecting their downtown market, followed by the Northeast Lakefront um, with about 2,500 de deliveries expected. And uh, there's a significant drop off in Northwest Indiana and uh, Southwest Chicago uh, for the first time in a while is in that top five uh, with developments going on in Auburn Gresham neighborhood, some other stuff uh, uh, going on over there as a result of the invest by Southwest and some of the some of the things going around the new Metro rail and things like that. So there's some excitement there. Um, apartment construction activity is down. We're expecting about 10,000 deliveries overall in 2020. Uh, concessions are way up, right? When you look at downtown concessions, 59% of the units are having concessions. Uh, it, that was to close the year out. Whereas the suburbs, they're, they're not, they're, they're, they're experiencing a little bit of an increased demand. And it's the migration away from the, the large uh, skyscrapers, the large, uh, the micro units with where they were selling tons of amenities. Um, we'll see in a later report, um, tenants are going more for uh, bang for your buck is why we're seeing increased occupancies in the south side, west side, where you can get a three bedroom, you get more, more, more for your dollar. So everybody's finding out, hey, I need a, not only do I need a bedroom, but I also need a, a office space and I need some other space to live in because we're spending more and more time at home. Um, uh, we're looking at uh, rents in the central business district of Chicago, uh, right up there in the top five of declines with San Francisco, San Jose, Seattle, Boston, and San Francisco. These are some of the most expensive rents in the country, um, That, but we're up there where it, as far as decline. San Francisco leading the pack with 20% in their central business district rent uh, uh, decreases uh, from the peak. Uh, we're at 12.1%, which is the highest decrease on record. Um, year over year uh, rent change when you go sub market by sub market, um, Glen Ellen fared pretty well. So did this in Arlington Heights. Southeast Lakefront, um, that's like South Shore, High Park, South Loop. Those areas outperform downtown, they outperform the rest of the collar counties. Uh, and that's pretty much half of the state when you look at the Cal, and you start looking at uh, Porter County, Will County, um, Fox River Valley. And they, did, they didn't increase rents, but they were flat. Everybody else took a little bit of a dip and uh, Southeast Lake County, um, and uh, South Chicago uh, as well. So uh, you, you just want to kind of look at the, the, the um, rent over rent change and there's demand. They're looking for bang for buck for the, uh, the, the, the uh, suburban, right? Uh, one bedrooms are in demand. And then the Chicago one bedrooms in demand. And then when you look at by bedroom type, everybody's looking for two and three bedrooms, right? Um, because we need more space. Where last year or two years ago, micro units, 350 unit uh, hotel size units were, 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 were just fine. Um, so when they look at the star rating, what we're looking at is class A apartments and vacancy in class A apartments. That's the brand new downtown stuff. Their vacancy rates are were trick around 14%. That's the highest on record. We went back all the way to 2006 in this chart. You could go back to, to 20, 1974 if you wanted to. They didn't have 12 or 14% vacancy rates downtown in class A apartments. Um, and then if you look, the class, the one, that would be your, your C assets. That would be the older pre-war constructed buildings in the south side and the west side of Chicago. The blue bar and the, and the orange bar uh, are the new class A. This is where everybody's going. They get bigger footprint, larger apartments, more bang for your buck. Um, so that's an interesting trajectory, especially when you look at the south and west sides of Chicago, having lower vacancy rates than downtown in areas of the, some areas of the West Loop. 
Um, uh, um, so uh, just, I don't wanna go over all of these. I just wanted to look at a few slides just to, just to look at some things uh, and share some things. When we look at Illinois sales, this is interesting when we look at the supply. Um, 2015, we we tip we had we averaged about uh, three and a half four months of supply inventory supply in the market, which meant buyers could pretty much find what they're looking for. Right now, we're looking at two months worth of supply, and you keep hearing stories from realtors saying, "Hey, there was a line outside of my open house. There was um, I, I heard a, a, I talked to a realtor downstairs at at, at, at one Chicago uh, that does residential." And um, he bid it $110,000. His client bid it $110,000 above the list price with a $100,000 earnest money deposit and lost the deal. That's how competitive this market is right now. And there's other slides that'll show that less than 2% of the inventory out there is distressed properties. That's the, uh, the lowest level of distressed properties in a long time. So there's a not, not a lot to choose from for uh, the fix and flippers or the guys looking for significant um, value add. Significant uh, existing home sales are, are up. They've spiked up. One of the things that's driving that is interest rates uh, being so low that um, it's able to push, push rates. Chicago, uh, this always comes up about Chicago being a, a population market and losing, losing, losing population. Um, we lost we're basically flat, right? 0.2%. That means some people moved out and some people moved in. What's important to note about the Chicago market is that we're the third largest city, we're the third largest MSE. And, and when they're looking at growth cities, they're looking at growth cities. Some of these growth cities, they're, they're, their population is growing, but we have neighborhoods in Chicago that have more populations than some of the whole cities that they're comparing it to. So I, I'm not that alarmed about population. Uh, some of the core areas of our city is growing. Uh, other people are leaving because of you know, employment opportunities, opportunities abound. But when you got 9 million people in your basically metropolitan area, some people are always gonna, some people are always gonna leave. But there is a lot of bad press. There is crime. There is uh, employment issues. There is a bunch of things that factors that affect and impact uh, people leaving. But when we look at apartments, the main drivers for apartments are population. I don't think it's something to be alarmed what if you're investing in apartments because within three miles of any property in Chicago, there's over 300 and something thousand people. Um, now it is something to be alarmed at as far as other issues, but as far as investing in apartments and investing in Chicago, I don't think that that, that should slow you down. But Illinois suffered the second largest decline in the nation. And it looks like we lost overall in Illinois, 79,000 79, people, followed by, looks like California lost a lot of people. Um, that, one of the things that shows is that the cost of living may be, may be increasing more than people can keep up with. Um, employment changed by industry. We all know the hospitality industry took the biggest hit as far as employment, employment is uh, concerned with a, a, a hotel occupancy taking a big hit in tourism and things like that. But I'm gonna stop and I'm gonna turn it back over. I don't think they expected me to go that long um, to uh, Travis. <laughs> Thanks for all that information, Tony. Just wanted to take a brief second to pause right quick. I see that we received a question regarding uh, developments in Chicago. I know Jason has been on top of that. Jason, what uh, updates can you provide regarding any developments that might be coming? Absolutely. Uh, thanks, Travis. Uh, Tony touched on it a little bit um, on one of the metrics uh, about the North Lakefront, um, kind of expecting about 2,500 um, you know, new deliveries. Uh, for developments and just kind of want to point out something that's going on in the Logan Square area um, right in the heart of Logan Square actually uh, it's a new development uh, taking place uh, at 26 uh, 14 uh, North Emmett and it's actually uh, it, it was an old vacant um, city-owned parking lot um, that was owned by the city 
and uh, the development is actually underway uh, right now, and it's going to be 100 units of affordable living uh, space, which is really nice, and um, it's going to give the, the residents in the community uh, opportunity to, to kind of stay in the area um, and, and have some, some really great um, high quality, um, you know, apartments that are coming in the Logan Square area. Um, and uh, so, so that's just one for, for the North Lakefront. And uh, I think last, last week we touched a little bit on um, kind of the, the cross uh, product type development that, that's happening in the, the medical district um, here on, on the West Side neighborhoods. And um, I just wanted to expand a little bit on uh, what's kind of taking place over there. Um, we, we have companies like the Marquette companies um, who are really trying to capitalize on the expected growth of the, the medical district. Um, you have, you know, schools like, you know, Rush University, uh, UIC, uh, which is in very close proximity uh, to the, the Illinois Medical District. Uh, so you have companies like Marquette Companies uh, planning almost 700 units of uh, residential living. Um, the first phase of, you know, what they're planning is, is actually underway already currently and is close to being done. Uh, it's a redevelopment project of about 270 uh, apartments that were being underutilized, and they've actually redeveloped the, uh, that first uh, that first phase uh, of the the project, and they also actually are planning on an additional 400 units uh, to come after that redevelopment project. So, uh, a ton of developments happening um, in, in the North Lake Front, um, a lot going on in the medical district as well, um, and those are just a couple of key projects. Thanks for that, Jason. If you all want to stay up to date regarding the developments coming to the city of Chicago, please feel free to drop your contact information or your email address in the uh, chat box. Also, I encourage anyone, if you all do have any additional questions, please feel free to use that chat function. I see that we're live on Facebook as well as live on YouTube. So please feel free to send in any questions. I see that one other question came in has to do with ADU pilot zones. Cody, please feel free to share any information or updates regarding that uh, pilot program for ADUs. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, can everybody hear me okay, first off? Good. All right, very good. Um, yeah, so ADU pilot zones in Chicago, uh, awesome thing, uh, and I've spoke about it a lot, is there's there's five new areas in Chicago that are promoting the um, accessory dwelling units or uh, uh, coach houses, uh, both conforming and non-conforming types of units uh, as a way to uh, provide more affordable housing to the city. Where this is great for our investors and uh, us as property owners is we have the opportunity to force a bit of appreciation uh, on our assets in some of these zones. Uh, to, to, to my knowledge, it's, uh, it's going to be on a first come first serve type of basis as far as applying. Uh, so sooner rather than later would probably be uh, our best options as far as uh, getting on the city's radar to, to implement some of these ADU spaces. Um, but so far the, the reviews and uh, everything's been positive in, in regards to uh, owners and how they're gonna approach the situation. Uh, if you have any questions about the ADU pilot zones at all, uh, I'm here to, to talk about it. And uh, I can uh, I'd be just drop your email in the chat and be happy to get with you later. Thanks Real for that, quick, Tony. I want to just do a quick, I see Jerry Brown, um, tax attorney, property tax attorney, uh, trusted source uh, that we rely on for information. Jerry, if you want to put your information in the chat, just in case somebody contact your email, uh, go feel free to do it. Also see Philip Johnson on there. It may be a, a, a pretty common name. I know a, a architect named Philip Johnson. If that's Philip, you want to put your information in chat, that would be okay. Or if you want to turn your mic on and say a few words, that would be great. Um, and uh, does a lot of affordable housing, does a lot of developments throughout the city. Let's get back to you, Travis. Perfect. Thanks for that, Tony. Um, so when it comes to the ADU pilot programs, and as well as the recent developments in Chicago, Vince, what can you help us understand that when it comes to investors actually looking to acquire assets? Are they looking in the ADU zones or the opportunity zones? What information can you share? Well, the interesting thing regarding these zoning ordinances that we're seeing regarding ADU and opportunity zones is they not only affect the value of investments 
in the specific ADU and, and opportunity zones, but they affect the surrounding areas because of appreciation that stems outward. So we're seeing investor confidence in Chicago greatly rising, especially on hopefully what proves to be this back end of the pandemic. Tony stated some factors that do sometimes cause skittishness with investors, you know, crime reports, population decline over the last nine years, uh, which is really so incremental and so small that it's kind of flat, as Tony stated. But overall, Chicago remains the third largest MSE in the country with a average sale price lower than clearly, markedly lower than New York and LA. New York coming in at 1 million average, LA coming in at 500,000 average, Chicago coming in just above 300K. So a lot of meat on the bone from an investment perspective when it comes to investments, 50% of the population being renters makes multifamily a sprawling industry in Chicago. I want to say that it's often, uh, it's often noted that typical renters in Chicago spend less than 20% of their income on rent, which makes it also a great destination for renters, for people who are, you know, wanting flexibility with their jobs. They're coming here as a target market too, um, to move and work with potentially one of the 36 Fortune 500 companies that host their headquarters in the Chicago MSC area. Jason stated some developments coming, obviously not least of which the Obama Library coming to South Shore with groundbreaking this summer. So a lot of optimism is being had in the Chicago investment market for many of these factors. And actually United Bank of Switzerland issued a ranking of Chicago recently as the most balanced economy in the United States. So we're definitely seeing a lot of investors wanting to come here, not only for the strength of the economy, the strong rental market, which allows them to take profits, but the room for growth, as Tony stated, the bang for your buck that you can get with investing in Chicago and adding value. We're seeing markets like Rogers Park, Logan Square, Pilsen, Avondale, Humber Park, and Westtown, often rated as the most advantageous investment communities in the United States. So we're definitely seeing a lot of people trying to get in that market. Definitely undervalued in a lot of areas. Thanks for that, Vince. I uh, really appreciate you sharing that. Uh, we should be able to wrap up in the next few minutes here. Um, but yes, the, this, this is definitely a place to invest. Businesses continue to come here because of the strong pipeline of talent coming out of the universities that they can get at a, at a very good price. Some of the top universities in the country, Northwestern, Kellogg, University of Chicago, Loyola, DePaul, I can, I can just keep going as far as, as far as that's concerned. And also uh, the cost of living is, 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 is reasonable. Uh, we always complain because we get hit and we're used to a certain way. But um, when you compare it to other cities, some, even some smaller cities, Chicago is a place and we see that through our network. We have 600 uh, offices throughout the country with commercial brokerages in them. And our network is constantly calling us looking for opportunities in, in the Chicagoland area. Um, I want to give it back to you, Travis. And we, if we go over five minutes, it should be fine. Thanks, Tony. I just want to go over a few events that are upcoming this week. We have the Titans of Industry that's actually going to be on Tuesday, which is tomorrow, uh, from 3.30 to 5 p.m., where it's actually going to be showcasing some of the, the, the leaders in this industry and some of the challenges and opportunities that they face as well. Another opportunity or another event that we're actually going to be having this week is the Southside Community Investors Association. They have a, a meeting on Thursday, March 25th at 5.30 p.m. They'll be going over the 1031 Exchange and the Delaware Statutory Trust. And of course, if it's always Monday noon, the Multifamily Investment Advisors Group is going to be here to provide you with the, the multifamily market update. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Bye.